Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In the previous video, I have talked about this example using the traditional approach. And so here I'm going to just continue with the same example and I'm going to illustrate how you can solve this example using the p-value approach and the confidence interval approach. So for the p-value approach, recall that the first step is similar to the traditional step, which is to uh, write down the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And h null here is mu b minus mu m is equal to 0. And h1 is mu b minus mu m not equal to 0. So that is the first step. <coughs> The second step is to calculate the test statistic and um, the test statistic, I'm just going to write down the answer which we have already seen in the previous video. The answer is negative 0.86. So that is the test statistic. So now for the p-value approach, we need to consider finding the p-value which is the third step is to find the p-value. And for that, um, let me just sketch the position of negative 0.86 it's going to be somewhere here okay and um, i need to find uh, what's the p-value but first let us consider finding the area from this towards the end towards the left of the distribution and in order to find the area we are going to refer to the t distribution table okay so this is what i'm looking to find I am looking to find uh, the area from negative 0.86 to the left. So this one here. And I know that um, in table T distribution, you can see that we don't have a matching graph or matching diagram. So what I need to do is since I know the T distribution is a symmetric distribution, I can actually uh, consider um, taking the positive value of this which is 0 0.86 and I go on and find what's the area what's the probability of getting 0 0.86 and and greater than that the greater value than that and this area here is going to be similar to the area which I'm looking for right now the degree of freedom is 17 Okay, the degree of freedom is 17, so I'm just going to refer to this part. So this is degree of freedom 17. And um, I need to find where is 0 0.86. So now area is given by this, by this one, and this is what we are looking to find. Whereas um, we need to find on the table where is the position of 0 0.86. So if you look at this table here, you have the value of 1.333, 1.7, 2.1, 2.5, 2.8 and so on. And I'm just going to explain to you what it means by what's the meaning of all those values here. So if this is a T distribution with a degrees of freedom 17, so basically if I have 1.333, 1.333 is this position. And so the area from 1.33 to the right, the area is going to be um, equal to 0 0.10. So that's the area or that's the probability from 1.333 to, to the right. So the area is 0 0.1. Now, if you talk about... Um, 2.567, it means the position of 2.567 is going to be at this position, maybe 2.567. And so the area from 2.567 to the right, the area is going to be smaller than that, which is 0 0.01. So that's the area 0 0.01 or the probability. So now if you are trying to find the value of 0 0.86, 0 0.86 is going to be 0 0.86 is going to be on this side so this is going to be 0 0.86 and you can see that if you want to find what is the area from 0 0.86 to the to the right 
Okay, then the area is going to be definitely bigger than 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is this one. So 0 0.86, if I may write down the value on the table, 0 0.86 is going to be somewhere here before 1.333. So that means the area here is going to be greater than 0 0.1. So, um, so the area of 0 0.86 is going to be uh, great greater than 0 0.1 we don't know the exact number because it is not given on the table here and this area is similar to this area which i'm looking for which we're looking for originally yeah so now uh sorry so now let's go back to the problem here we know that the area here is going to be greater than 0 0.1 0 0.1 yeah okay uh, so mathematically speaking uh, what we just did is uh, I'm going to write down in terms of using mathematical notation basically it means probability t less than or equal to negative 0 0.86 the answer is uh, not a specific number but the answer is in terms of interval is going to be greater than 0 0.1 so the probability that the t value here is less than or equal to negative 0 0.6 that means the probability of it taking the value negative 0 0.6 and to the left it's going to be greater than 0 0.1 and i hope you do remember that this is a two-sided hypothesis um, test so this is a two-sided test so therefore the p-value has to be um, obtained by multiplying uh, this area with 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this with 2 times this probability. So if you times 2 on this uh, left hand side, therefore 0 0.1 also must be multiplied with 2. So 2 times probability of this is going to be greater than 0 0.2. Therefore, p-value is greater than 0 0.2. So that's the, the p-value for this example here. Now, in order to decide whether we reject or do not reject the null hypothesis, you need to compare the p-value with the uh, significance level. So since p-value is greater than alpha where your alpha is 0 0.05 so p value is greater than alpha where your alpha is 0 0.05 then um, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected cannot be rejected and so on the fifth step, the conclusion here is going to be similar to what you have seen in the traditional approach. There is not enough evidence to say that um, the average size of the farms in two countries is different. So that's the conclusion. The average size of the farms in two countries is different okay all right now let's go to let's proceed with the confidence interval approach Okay, so for the confidence interval approach, you will see that the, the first step is similar, which is this one. And on the second step, you're going to calculate or to construct the confidence interval. And this is the same example which you have seen in chapter 2, parameter estimation. So... I'm not going to go into details of how the confidence interval is constructed. I'm just going to write down the answer to this. 
the confidence interval is going to be mu b minus mu m is going to be between negative 27.73 and 11.73 so that's the confidence interval uh, for this question here which actually you have already done in chapter 2 parameter estimation so now on the third step you are going to decide uh, whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not and that is on the basis of comparing h null, the value of h null, whether it is included or not in this uh, confidence interval here. So you can see that um, the value of h null is 0. So since 0 is included in the result of the confidence interval therefore h null cannot be rejected okay and then the same conclusion as what you have seen here will be applied here okay so you will get the same conclusion all right i think that's all for now thank you very much for watching